Okay, the story I want to know about the story I want to know about is the one you uh, told about the the dog bandit. What? Uh, what? Now tell me about that one My again. No, 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 no. Tell me about that one stolen. again. Well, the dog catcher came in on the porch and got my baby. Well, how could the dog? That's my point. How could the dog catcher? Well, first of all, was the dog? You know, did the dog have a collar? You know, a tag, collar, tag, leash, license, everything. Because we well, were getting ready to go well, to the vet for his his bath. I was going to drop him off on my way to work. Hold on. Okay, first of all, what time? When was the dog stolen? Where was the dog stolen? Off the front porch, right there. Did they have the tags and everything like that? Well, by, by who, you said? The by dog? the dog catcher. Well, why the dog catcher stick? How can a dog catcher Because take they it? were down going through neighborhoods trying to find dogs that were, un animals that were unleashed and un uh, didn't have license and what have you. But yours did have all that. Didn't have to do that. She came to the front top step, the children told me, and said, Come here. Come here, girl. Well, Bandit, I guess Bandit said, I'm not a girl, I'm a boy, you know. You. Come here, boy. And Bandit, oh, very obedient, went right to the dog catcher. And she took him by the chain. He stuck this little loop on the chain mm -hmm. and walked him to the dog catcher's truck, mm -hmm. opened the door, and all these animals that were in there were yapping and carrying on. Mm -hmm. Put Bandit in there, and this when the children became furiously unhappy. One little boy told me, he said, Mother, Mrs. Bagby, the worst thing about the whole thing was it, that mean lady <laughs> took our, no, took your bandit. The, the lady, the door catcher was a lady. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. And put him in, in, in that truck that was dirty. And he is not used to being around things that are dirty. Mm. I said, how do you know all that? You could smell it. When they opened, when she opened that door, and all the other animals were trying to get out too, and she was pushing them back like that, mm. and she didn't, and didn't even put Bandit in there the way he's treated, just threw him in there just like he was a regular dog. <laughs> That's all he was. Well, how did you find out about it? When I uh, when I came out of the house. Oh, you hadn't gone out yet. No, I had just come into the house to check that I had the alarm and everything on. Mm -hmm. That's as far as I had gotten from the front porch. When I turned around, I said, ready to go, baby? There's no babies to go. Mm -hmm. Bandit was not there. That thing broke, broke my heart because I knew I had enough time to take him to the vet and anything that they want to ask me about him since the last visit and get to work on time. Mm -hmm. But that morning, I had not gotten to school with my babies yet, because I'm still trying to find about about my bandit. Well, how did you how did you finally find out about bandit? Because you knew it was at the dog. The kitchen. children told me that that, that that mean dog lady picked the, took bandit from the porch. But you got bandit back after he had been incarcerated. He had to he had been locked up. I that's the only thing I can say. Because when I went to get him, identify him, he had a look. He was in a cage all by himself, mm. looking so sad and so dramatic. And the lady said, well, before we go any further, let me go out there and see if he can recognize you. Now, all these mm -hmm. animals been captured. Mm -hmm. You mean one person walks in there and everybody claim authority. <laughs> That's my mom. That's my mom. That's my sister. That's my brother. Everybody. And she said, do you, can you, uh, above all this, can you recognize your baby? I said, right over there. She said, how do you know? I said, who is sitting still waiting for instructions? Mm -hmm. She said, waiting for instructions? What kind of house did he come from? I said, you talk about my house, our house? She said, I mean, what kind of community does he come from? I said, you mean my com our community? She said, I keep getting this word our and my all mixed up. I said, you just want to know how he get how he got here. I she said, yes. I said, based on what the children in the neighborhood told me, what they saw, they said that mean old lady 
took our bandit, and that's when she found out bandit was his name, mm-hmm. and put him in that dirty truck. That truck was dirty. She said, I noticed that they said the pickup, the pickup E was uh, healthy looking, healthy something else, Mm -hmm. healthy something else. Said the whole scenario of the visit with the animal control person. I said, that's who that was that took my baby. She said it was an animal control, and she told me the reason. Yeah, what was the reason? They wanted to check the, if there were loose loose animals in the neighborhood, and people were not, they were not, uh, didn't have leashes. Yeah, but that's my point. The, the animal had a, a collar and, a, and tag, so how could they possibly mistake that for someone who doesn't have that's a... What I'm, that's what the children were saying to me. Banny has all of this state. The one little boy said, I know it because I mean, I had the dog. I had the bandit's cousin. On the same block, okay. Uh huh. He said when one went, the other one was going to follow him real mm-hmm. soon. Because mm-hmm. if not, the doctor at the hospital, at the animal hospital, would t- say to them, Mrs. Bagby, have you talked with and he'll say, to the family? I said, no. He said, remind them. That bandit is here today. That's all they had to say. Okay, I can't get back to the other point. Now, now let's go back to bandit. I'm trying to figure out. But how did you know that the, um, oh, you knew you knew that he was in animal control because the children told you, but then you went to work. I didn't go to work yet. I called my principal and told him I couldn't find bandit. Oh. He said, where is bandit? <laughs> now, bandit is not one of the teachers. Mm-hmm. He is not even the parent of mm-hmm. if anybody in the school. But my principal told me, what do you want me to do about your babies here at school? I said, would you do me a favor and explain to my babies that I can't find, I found Bandit. Mm -hmm. Somebody took him away and I went to go get him and bring him out Mm -hmm. from where he is, take him to his doctor to be checked. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to come to school. He said, I can do that. He said, what else you want me to do? I said, is Jim there? That Jim is the PE teacher. He said, yes. I said, would you ask Jim to monitor my class until I get there? Mm-hmm. He said, you know Jim going to do it. Jim may be up there already because you hadn't got, he hadn't seen you call, come, come with the car. Mm-hmm. I said, tell Jim thanks. And what I'm going to do is give him a free ice cream. <laughs> that was a big deal. Ten cents you gonna give somebody just for nothing? When was this? The seventies? What was ten cents? When, when was this? That's what they were charging the children. What what year was this? Uh, about no. About I guess now it's been about seven years ago. No, that's not much long ago. But this that's before they. That was the yeah. year that they bought in soup and sal soup, soup and sandwiches. For a, a lunch choice. What did you have before? What everybody else had. They had macaroni and cheese and a link of sausage or, or something. That's what everybody had. Mm-hmm. Teachers and all. Mm-hmm. But the kids went on a protest. Oh. Who was the person who was going to speak to the folks in the cafeteria? They chose me. And I went in there and told them I, had, I needed an audience. They said, Oh my gosh, I'm going to witness what an audience is like, the, the dietitian said. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's get back to the dog. I'll get, we'll talk about the, 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 how you, you know, your behavior at your, at your job, at your school mm-hmm. later, okay? I want to go back to this doggy. So you're in there and you got the dog out? How, were they asking you about the dog and all this at the, at the dog pound, whatever they call no, it? No, they had all of that right in front of them. Mm-hmm. When the lady bought him from here, she must have gone back to the dog catcher's place, the building, mm-hmm. and continued on her route, I guess. 
because mm. she was not there to respond to anything. Yeah, because we had to find out what's happened. Now, Bennett was a special dog. Just kind of what you was telling me. <laughs> tell me about the thing about when well, you said grace or whatever, or you, you was praying. But no, but no, see, the thing of it is, when I was trying to get him out of, I call it out of jail, mm -hmm. I had to have some papers to prove that I was the rightful owner. All these months and all these years, when Bandit would get sick, I'd take him to the vet, to his doctor. Mm -hmm. If I had some trouble with Bandit not eating the, the food he likes most of all, mm -hmm. I'd call his, his vet. Mm -hmm. And the vet would say, tell everybody to hold my, hold my calls for a little while. We have an emergency at this end. Mm -hmm. The emergency is for him to tell me what to do for Bandit. I said, he says, is that all right? I said, thank you so much. I would hang the telephone up and go to Bandit and tell Bandit, just like Bandit going to say, that's good, my child. <laughs> he looked at me with those pretty eyes. And I said, I tell you what, if you take some, I'm going a, I'm to a smell some. Mm. Well, you you said, take it and I'll smell it. You said you had pretty eyes. What kind of dog was it? We knew he was a Cocker Spaniel. Big, small? Black. No. Mm -hmm. about, about like this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Black all over. It had a, a tippy tail that was tan mm -hmm. and had a patch under his little tummy. Mm -hmm. Prettiest thing you want to see in your life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then I looked at my baby and the lady said to me, do you have papers with you so we know that you are the rightful owner? No one had ever asked me if he was my dog before that day. And I said, no, but he's with us all the time. She said, I'm sure he is. Well, I don't hear. I'm still. What happened to the collar and the, and, the, and the tags that was on the dog? I told her what the little kid told me, what they did when they took him, put him in the truck. They took that from around his neck. The collar. Mm -hmm. When the collar was attached to the the chain that was holding that was holding him, mm -hmm. all of that was taken from from off bandit. Mm -hmm. And the lady just put it in something. He said, the little boy said, I don't know where she she put it in something up there where she was driving. So the lady at the S at the at the kennel said, uh, she was probably putting it under security. Till she got back here to the business. I said, well, that was a nice thing for her to have done. I shouldn't have said that. that yeah, no, but nice. I, I hear it sounds, my problem is that it sounds like a shakedown to me. You know? It does. That, that she was going around doing this when she couldn't find doing, a shred. Doing, like she said, her quota ah, was there not go. there. Hmm. And she said, now this is a, oh, that looks like the prime place. People will put their animals out on their front. Mm. And don't and leave them there, but some people probably may have done that. But Bandit was not one of those people, you mm. know, one of those animals. But she said to me, "I said, well, can I just take Bandit and go on? I have to go to work." <laughs> I looked at the clock; it was already after nine o'clock. Mm. That means my babies were in class, mm. and she said. Sure. Do you have some identifica identification papers? I said, yeah. I thought she'd for me. Mm. I take open my wallet to show her my driver's license and my social security card. I don't know why I was going to show her that. And uh, showing her something I had been to a teacher's association or something. Mm. I showed her all that because she wanted to know what was that was I uh, employed and I said yeah I'm a teacher and she said you are and by that time I had presented all this stuff to her as for my credentials and she said um, there is a fee <laughs> for call uh, what you put animals in shelter shelter fee I said but I didn't ask anyone to come to our home and take Bandit away. 
So I don't think I should have to pay. Mm. That was a big thing for me to have said to somebody. And she said, it may not be, but that is the rule. And I said, I don't know about the rule. Mm. So she said, do you have that paper? I said, no, I've never, I've never had those, those kind of papers. She said, uh, well, who is the last person who may have those papers? I said, around the neighbor, in the neighborhood, not too far from where we live. She said, is it possible that you can get that person to say, I will release my ownership from that family mm. to the bag piece? Mm. I said, I think I can do that. I came home. The Marja lives around the corner, second house. Mm. I said, Mar, I told her what the situation was. I said, Marge, I said, I can't get him out of in, out of can't get him in, from incarceration until I have an authority from the owner saying that I give them permission to release him. Mm. And she said, What do I have to do? I didn't say anything I wanted her to do. I just say we're from the owner. Mm. And she said, when you going go when you going back down there to try to get him? And she said, in him. I never liked anybody calling my dog just say in him. He had a name. <laughs> <laughs> but before I could put the telephone down in this house, mm -hmm. get in the car and go around the corner to the second house to get out to go across her lawn to get the note or something, she met me halfway up her lawn. Mm -hmm. About from here to the middle of this house, mm -hmm. the, had it written, be it known on this date, the clocks re rescind ownership of one bandit Clark to the Bagby home and the date and she said what time is it I told her she looked at the clock in the in the car mm. and wrote that down there and this date on this date they put the date and put her name Marjorie Marjorie Clark not Margie we always call her Margie mm. she was Marjorie that day mm. Marjorie Clark Gave it to me. I said, thank you, Marjorie. She said, let me know the outcome when you get a chance. I said, all right, I will. Got in that car. Now, Alexis would have been proud of me that day because mm -mm. I was speeding. You said. <laughs> the speed limit was 35. When I saw that sign, it says animal control this way. I said, I'm following the sign. Mm -mm. When I got to the end of that street, every I said it sounded like every animal in the world was back there crying because they heard somebody coming and it wasn't that truck. Mm -hmm. But when I opened that door and got out, I thought I was Mac Dan Mac Dillon and um, and and all the other hot cowboys. Mm -hmm. But when I walked in there, she later looked at me and smiled. Yeah, but you, you was actually bringing, talk about gun smoke, you was actually bringing some smoke to them. You know, as we say, some smoke, this is the, the, the modern way of saying uh, we're going to yes. bring some fire to them, you know? Ooh, that was, brother, that was one of the worst experiences I'd ever been in in my life. But see, I had to carry him to his vet mm -hmm. because the children told me that they put him in a truck that didn't smell good and also it was dirty. Mm -hmm. And Bandit was not used to being in anything that was dirty. I said, the children knew more about Bandit as much as I did about Bandit. Mm -hmm. But when I walked into that place and, and they saw Bandit, they didn't say, hello, Mrs. Bagby, or anything. They said, it's Bandit. Bandit is here. Somebody said, did you say Bandit was here? Somebody said, yeah. He said, tell Mrs. Bagby, I'll be right out there to get him. You talk about when you had gotten out of the pound already, 
And now you was now you took I'm the bandit. Now. You took the bandit bandit to the to the vet, veterinarian. Uh huh. The usual, the, yeah, the usual veterinarian. Uh huh. Okay. Well, it's, Portsmouth. It's personal. It's, that's because you live in Chesapeake and Portsmouth is just another way. Everybody says that. I don't understand why y'all think these kind of different things. You, you know, know why? <laughs> when we hear the news about the weather or anything, uh-huh. they'll say, uh, "And from Portsmouth, it is cloudy and something and something." And it, and the reporter will say. And until it makes time, she said, stay safe and remember your life is in your hand. And if you think that's true, look at the other person who may not have a hand or something. They always have something, something nice to say at the end of their little show. About Portsmouth. Mm-hmm, Portsmouth. Mm-hmm. And if the person's from uh, say if Newport News reporting, they would say, well, I'm going to tell you, you know, as usual, the mayor, not the mayor, the mayor over here in Portsmouth is having his, his annual. Uh, you mean Newport News? Newport News. Yeah. It's annual uh, um, picnic for the community. He includes his. His community and anybody around, mm-hmm. in the sound of his voice, he would say, mm-hmm. "You're welcome." Mm-hmm. They said the best food you've ever witnessed and eaten is to go to his picnic. Mm-hmm. And if he doesn't care if COVID nineteen or twenty or forty five would be in existence, he's going to have that picnic because mm-hmm. his his clients would like to have it. They look forward to that. Well, now, see. The worst thing about the whole story was that you talking about we're back to the veterinarian uh-huh. now. Uh-huh. All this time, the vet asked me, "Mrs. Bagby," I said, "Yes." Where was Bandit that he would get so soiled? <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> so even the vet, okay. I'm sorry. So what would what, you tell him? I said they locked him up. Mm. Who locked him up? No one called me, he said. Now, doctor, the doctor's supposed to be in there working with these sick animals in there. Mm-hmm. He has left all of them trying to find out who, who, who bothered Bandit. <laughs> and Bandit was acting like, like he was reading the script. And as the, doc, the doctor was asking me questions, and I was trying to explain, mm-hmm. Bandit would look at you so lovingly and say, that's not really what happened. Let me tell you what happened. <laughs> See, if you want the truth, ask me. I was the one that was thrown in that truck. I was the one they wanted to put me in there with those other animals that hadn't had a bath. Mm-hmm. I said, look at my baby defending himself with those pretty eyes. Doc- the doctor said to me, Mrs. Bagby, I know you've seen a lot of animals. But have you ever seen anything as handsome as Bandit? I said, not living. Mrs. Bagby, I know you've seen a lot of things. But have you ever seen an animal like Bandit who has the ability to pray? I said, one other. He said, where is that one? I said, Bandit's sister. They live beside each other, don't they? I said, no. One lives in... uh, over here by Western Branch High School. She said, but you're over here off off a military highway, not too far from that. I said, that's right. So they're not seeing each other that often. I said, no. I said, but that's, this sister is over there, my girlfriend's sister. He said, I'm going to ask you one more question. Does your girlfriend who has bandits Sister, who is Bandit's sister on her? Can that his sister pray? I said, Yes. He said, I said I was going to ask you one more question, but I got to ask you one more. How does he Bandit know when this prayer is over? I said, When I say amen, Bandit put his little head right down, just like he was praying. Mm. I said, That's what he does. I said, Mm hmm. She said, what happens if you have company to come to your house and they are afraid of dogs or cats or things? 
and afraid to be around animals. I said, I'm allergic to animals. She said, he said, what percent? I said, 85. He said, but how is it that you can handle bandit and you don't have an ad, uh, uh, analogy? He called it something. And I didn't understand that terminology. What, another allergy? What did he call it? Susceptibility to something. Oh, susceptibility. He was just using English words. Okay, go ahead. Well, everything's English. I said, would you rephrase what you just said, ask me in another way? <laughs> he said, with your, you're allergic to animals. Why is it that the earth, the uh, your urgency, no, you're being allergic, being around bandit. Does it bother you? I said, no, I'm immune to that. Well, love is a powerful tool. It, it said, kills, said, it kills everything. He said, why is this? I said, because I'm, I told him, I said, because I'm his mother. <laughs> Let me go 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 back. I'm go back to his praying because you when you uh, you said he, he knows when you, he hears amen, so knows to put the head up. But how to put the head down? How do you know when to put? I said, let us pray. And then what does the door? I get the tower and put right down the door. Mm -hmm. And I said, let us pray. And Bandit would look up at me and fold his little paws and put his head on top mm -hmm. and open one eye. Get one white eye open. And when he puts that other eye closed, that means ready for prayer. And whatever he has in his head, I guess, and what I had in my mouth, I would say amen. And he would unfold, no, he would open his eyes and unfold his little paws in front of him. And you wouldn't hear from Bandit anymore until the next morning, him to go out. Hmm. Okay, I just want to know that story. Thank you for this. That baby was something else. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I know it was. I love that. I love that dog. I know he was here because me with little Walter. But little Walter didn't have to be ready to go to school because Bandit would be here in the morning sitting at the front mailbox waiting for the door to open. So he'll know that little Walter was up, I guess. We were up. Mm -hmm. And he would stay there until it was time for that bus to come around that corner so little Walt could be get on that bus. He would come to the front door and mm -hmm. sit there until little Walter opened that door. And he'd come out and they'd walk down the walkway to the bus, look both ways. He got bandit looking both ways, I guess, to see if traffic was coming. Mm -hmm. And he got on the bus, and it, and the children on the bus made the announcement. Here he comes! Here he comes! Here comes Walter Junior and the dog. Here he comes! <laughs> and the bus driver was just about bad as the, the children. Here he come! Here they come! Here. <laughs> I said, "This is the way to go to school." Yeah, but yeah. I said, "Little Walter said, Mommy, I thought there was something that that uh, Daddy didn't." have a chance to sign in, in order for us to go on the school trip. We had to have a signature of both parents who are home. It's because some parents are not home because they, they got to work in the Army, in the Navy, and they name all the branches. Mm -hmm. I said to myself, what I just ask you, uh, you know, the wh where you're going, I just would like to know in case of an emergency. Hmm. Oh, he said, oh, I guess he said, you didn't ask me all that. Mm -mm. So I had to sign that. And then I initialed my name, my initial behind Walter's name. Some little kid said, Mrs. Bagby, why are you writing so much? <laughs> my mom just wrote her name up there and gave it to me and said, yeah. Mm. And my little boy said, I didn't even get my mama's signature. So somebody said, how? Oh, who signed it? Your mama signed it. He said, no, I told you my mama and my daddy couldn't sign it. They were deployed. Mm -hmm. He said, well, you can't, if, you, if you're in Camp Lejeune, I said, that's, mil that's military. And the other one is that's in Marines. Camp Pendleton. Yes, Marines. 
I said, that's the reason they can't do it at the same time, because they're in two different locations. Mm-hmm. And the bus driver said, I'm so glad you were here. She said, I was trying to figure how I can explain this, why the mama and the daddies are not signing these things. Some of this because they are deployed. Well, you had some very active children in the community for them to give them the answer to these questions. They were ask. They were inquisitive. Mm-hmm. Mr. Copeland lived across the street. We called him the Bat Maxson of the community. Bat Masterson, Mr. Western. Yeah. If he saw a strange car out here on the street mm-hmm. parked more than maybe a couple of days. Mm-hmm. He would inquire mm-hmm. to see if is everything all right over there. Mm-hmm. Did, does he need to come on and help? But see, when Mr. Mr. Copeland came, he came with something on his hip. Mm-hmm. And for a long time, I didn't know he was wearing a gun. Well, oh, like, Virginia, you can wear you. Well, I guess you only in the home. Is it open carry? Home. Thing? Okay. So, I mean, he had permission to carry it on him. Mm-hmm. But I didn't, I had not seen it. Until one day, they had a snake up at this tree right here between our houses. Mm. And the children wanted that snake down because that snake didn't belong up there and it could bite somebody and somebody would die. No one told those children that the snake would crawl down out of that tree, go to them, bite them, and they would die. No one told them. They told Mr. Copeland that they got a bad uh, a bear animal over there in the tree and the tree and it won't come down. Mr. Copeland said, don't worry, children. I have it. It's in my hand. Don't worry, children. It's in my hand. I want you to do is go back over there to the Bagby's place and ask Mrs. Bagby let you come into the garage somewhere from the traffic. And I, the children came back and said, told me, Mrs. Bagby, where is the traffic in your garage? <laughs> I said, I don't have it. The traffic in the garage, but he said, Mr. Copeland said for us to come over here and get in your garage, stay away from the traffic. And we're trying to do what he said do. Because if Mr. Copeland told our mothers that, and daddies that we didn't obey him, they would not be happy with us. And we'll be under punishment. Mm-hmm. How old were these children? Uh, see now. Must have been about six, seven, eight. About seven. Mm-hmm. About seven years old. Because of little Walter, when we left the north to move over here, uh, he was in, I think it was second grade, third mm-hmm. grade. Mm-hmm. Well, they all got in the garage. I had the door open there. So all the little faces could get a view of the tree. Mm. Mr. Copeland walked over here. I said Bat Masson, didn't I? Mm-hmm. He was like he was Sherlock Holmes and all of them combined together. <clears throat> stand back, children. Stand back. Stand back. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I have the old things in my hand. <laughs> they said, Mr. Copeland, what you going to do? He said, I'm going to get the snake out of the tree. And you won't have to be worried about this anymore. Thank you, Mr. Copeland. And I said that Mr. Copeland is a strange person. He's the strongest man in the world. All these children around here are respecting Mr. Copeland. And I don't know why they're respecting him so. But then something came out of his pocket. that he said, okay, put your hands over your ears. You know, Children went to obey what he said. Somebody turned to me and said, Mrs. Bagby, you forgot to put your hands over your ear, ears because Mr. Copeland can't tell us what to do next until he said, everybody. <laughs> you know what I did, though? Mm-hmm. Put my hands over my he- ears. And the first thing Mr. Copeland shot up there to get that snake, he missed it. Mr. Copeland knew he missed that snake. Mm. I knew it. And most of the children knew it. But not what they said. You missed him, Mr. Copeland. <laughs> I'm just aiming up. <laughs> he said, 
I was just aiming up. <laughs> I, I, I got so tickled. And I said, I listened carefully. You have to practice before you do anything. Somebody said, I heard somebody say you practice before you preach. And I said, now what church, what church is he attending? Hmm. I said, that's all right. I said, somebody, he's heard it somewhere. And I said, it's appropriate. The old Mr. Copeland said, now next time, I don't want anybody to move. Don't say anything. Because I got my eye on him. And one little girl whispered, she said, do you see which eye it is? <laughs> I said, the innocence of children. But she said he had his eye on him. He said, I. He didn't say eyes. He said, I. And she wanted to know <laughs> which eye it was. He's talking that Western talk. <laughs> That's oh, what they're Mr. talking Copeland. the Wild West. When Mr. Copeland got that snake, you think the whole world had erupted. The next shot. Next shot, Mr. Copeland had it and the snake came down on the ground. But he said, don't touch it. Somebody said, I heard somebody say, if you talk, touch a snake that's dying, you turn to a snake. Mm -hmm. Nobody moved out this out back, uh, garage because they didn't want to turn to a snake. Mm -hmm. how, what, big, how big was the snake? How fat was it? About, about big around is that? Mm, a little that's, thing. That's pretty, well, it's pretty big. Yeah. Mm. To them, I guess it was like a horse or something. Mm. But, the, but when Mr. Copeland was here, he told mm. them what to do. And they, I guess they felt safe mm. if they were inside the garage where no one has walked before, you know, been mm. there before mm. for that condition <laughs> that they were safe. And he had a gun, too. Mm. I was the one. I should have been in front of the children, shouldn't I? No. I wasn't. No. I don't know. Side is good. I was in the back. <laughs> protecting, the, protecting the children. <laughs> protecting the children from the back. Well, uh, thanks a lot, Ma, for the, two, for the two stories, the dog stories and the snake story. That's right. <laughs>